Okay, so uh, last time we um, were talking about invertible uh, linear transformation. So just to um, summarize that, uh, if you have a linear transformation T from a finite dimensional space V into a finite dimensional vector space W, let's say dimension of V would be N, dimension of W would be N. And T is a linear transformation. Uh, then we've seen that we can associate to that an M by N matrix, right? The matrix of T uh, from the basis, let's say, alpha V to the basis beta of W. So we get the matrix T from alpha to beta, which is an M by N matrix over the field F. Okay, and we, we've seen that this association is very natural in the sense that if you compose two linear transformation, the associated matrix of the composition would just be the product between the original matrices. So um, as a function, T could be invertible or not, but if T is invertible, time that it's, its inverse will, will automatically become a linear transformation as well. is going to be a map from V to from W to V now. Right. Uh, this map will have as its matrix going backwards. So the matrix from beta to alpha is going to be an N by M matrix. And we've seen last time that this entire picture is, is only possible if um, this matrix is invertible as a matrix because in the end we proved last time that this thing holds. So the matrix associated to T inverse from beta to alpha is the same as the inverse of the matrix of T from alpha to beta. But how can this be possible since only square matrix this entire picture only makes sense in the case of finite dimensional vector spaces when V and W have the same dimension, so when N uh, equals M and when the matrix of T is invertible. Okay, so now when, when there exists a linear transformation T that is invertible from a vector space V to a vector space W, we're going to say that isomorphic. Okay, and we're going to call this linear transformation an isomorphism from V to W. For example, uh, let B be a square matrix that is invertible. Then matrices N by N over F and matrices N by N over F being identical, they, they should be isomorphic, right? So there should exist isomorphism between them, and here is one of them. B of a matrix A defined to be B inverse AB. Okay, let's check that this is an isomorphism.
So again, an isomorphism is a linear transformation that is invertible. So there are two things to be checked. One, this map has to be a linear transformation first. So what does that mean? It means that if I do phi of CA plus C is a scalar plus another matrix B, this should be C times phi of A plus phi of D. Right? Uh, but what is phi of CA plus D? According to the definition above, this is B inverse times CA plus D times B. And that is CB inverse AB plus B inverse DB, which is exactly what we need. So it is a linear transformation. Uh, but to be an isomorphism, it has to be also invertible. The non invertible B means both one to one. Or. However, we've seen a thing a while ago that if the two vector spaces, the domain and the codomain, have the same dimension, then one of them is enough. And those spaces clearly have the same dimension because they are one and the same, right? Major over F. So it is enough to check one of them, one to one or onto. I'll just check that V is one to one. And for linear transformations, being one-to-one -one is equivalent to looking at all the elements that are mapped to zero or the null space of the linear transformation, right? We're trying to show that null space is just contains a zero vector only. So let A be a matrix such that phi of A is the zero vector. Of course, the zero vector here would be zero n by n matrix. Uh, but phi of A is B inverse AB. And that's the zero matrix. Uh, go ahead and multiply by uh, B to the left and by B inverse to the right, that identity. So A has to be the zero matrix, therefore the null space is just contains the zero vector only, so we're done. It is one to one and therefore uh, invertible. So uh, the idea of this example is, you know, what you need to do in order to show that something is an isomorphism, right? You need to check two things, a linear transformation and um, invertible. Okay. So now. This makes sense uh, in the direction of the discussion that we already had. Uh, so when you have two finite dimensional vector spaces, um, they will be isomorphic if and only if they have the same dimension. There is no way uh, you'll find an isomorphic dimension through or, you know, um, that's the basic idea. So let's look into the proof. Uh, so let's just say that V and W are isomorphic. Uh, we want to see that this, they have the same dimension. Being isomorphic means hmm, there exists an isomorphism between them, a linear transformation that is invertible. But we've already proved last time that an invertible linear transformation can only exist on finite dimensional spaces if 
the spaces have the same dimension. Okay. Now we're starting with two vector spaces that finite dimensional but with the same dimension and we're trying to show that they are isomorphic. <clears throat> okay, so let's say that this common dimension is n. Let's just say that uh, V has a basis consisting of uh, V1 through Vn. Let this be a basis for V. And let uh, gamma W1, W2, Wn, they have the basis W. Now, in order to show that two vector spaces are isomorphic, at this point, all I can do is to construct an isomorphism between them, so I have to come up with a linear transformation that is invertible, and I can do that based on the uh, elements from the basis here. So let, well, we know for sure that there exists a unique notion. From V to W, uh, with the property that T of VI equals WI. Because the proof of the information is completely determined by what it does on the elements of a basis. So so I define this one to do P of VI UI. This linear transformation I can show is the isomorphic need. In our so all we need to check is that it's invertible. Let's see that is on. Going to look for this at the range of So is the span of the image in the base of V V1. But those were defined to be W1 through Wn. Now this is the span of W1 through Wn. Well, that represents the basis, right? For example, so the say W. But I'm mean, right, the rate of C is it is all pretty much It is a linear between V and W and It's for visual vector spaces are isomorphic or not, just you know for sure that they are isomorphic. And here is a simple isomorphism, even in this proof. It's definition as well. Okay. Final here. Yeah. 
your So we take a linear transformation um, from V to W, let's so say, dimension N to dimension N. At an M matrix. And the association was very nice, right? Now, the, the set of all dimensions uh, we prove the element space together with the dimension and the dimensions. Here, all right. So we have remaining all M nature, right? So we have from matrices, right? This map takes a linear transformation. And in fixed basis. The natural question because in our transformation and matrices, we decide maybe this, this map phi is a very it means isomorphs, right? Are more in linear transformations and makes it the answer is yes. Uh, so if we have and double dimensional that makes a linear transformation. The matrix associated with the isomorphs. Okay, and I want To apply it to mark to the transformation tension, this would be T plus U. But so well behaved. Behaves nicely with respect to and the scalar of the division. So it is the transfer. One to one and on to, right? Start with on to. I want to show for every matrix 
find the so for ever in matrix n and there is in the in the image so for the equals a. So if I show this and only this, this would mean fifty equal to and also would be right. I know that matrix is m by m over space of what dimension? M by m times m this is L from VW, we have no basis for that. We actually control that space. The only way of controlling will be if it's actually anything. So we have to mean that exactly that a unique T, right? And that would mean T of T instead of being one to one. So it actually means Both directions is was as the one and is this or that you M. The one that I'm same as the one that I used here. So here I used it in the sense that there is a unique the vector, each vector i is the lemma back then. I don't know which chapter that is, but for first set in the space, the second set in the space, a transformation that sends vi into wi. I think it is the Started talking about the transformations or so. And I and I want to see a that this is unique It sends each VJ. Okay, so every day, this is a I have a collection, and, and I, I know that there is a need transformation sensor like that. Now, 
shine like this, then the matrix of T from beta to gamma will be right because those would be the entries A I J. It defines this inclusion is containing all the Being isomorphic to you. maybe let me know. Now, uh, uh, which is very, I'm going to skip it for now. now. Not entirely. I just, I would rather talk about, about it exactly. It's a change, a change of basis matrix. Um, well, you have a linear transformation going between two vectors, and you know where alpha is the basis for the basis. And you want to change the basis. Something to offer. Possible to get you matrix. Uh, but it's it to be very computational to get to the certain matrix. Do it now, and I'm going to need it. I definitely want to skip it for now and just talk about that. Okay, so this being said, we'll move on directly into the surface. It is about um, solving our equations. Uh, so uh, please take three and make sure you're familiar with their They will not. Um, I'll see why. And, uh, um, I'm not, not, you know, nothing new compared to undergraduate algebra. Um, you know, some of just to remember. Here, uh, this happens to say about the the determinant and the determinant function so to every matrix you associate a scalar so what is the And by a matrix um, is done by what is called the compactor extension row of the matrix. Do you remember how that works? Or should I be 
system. So it all started, and it all starts from the two by two matrix so when they start defining them. So if I look at the two by two matrix, so it looks like this A, B, C, going to be A, B, minus two. Uh, uh, three by three matrix. So three by three matrix is going to be. And there are different um, tricks that make you play for tricks. Uh, you're used to. Do you go with me? And that's not something that you've been used to. So it's Right. I see my the I. There are so many. One way uh, uh, generalize is actually to, uh, when you do cofactor expansion along the first matrix. So, um, a B C entries. If I'm doing what I have there, are, uh, those matrices which I I eight with the I uh, matrix A. Um, which basically means that maybe you know when column one, column one is your level E, which is so this matrix here would be with two. That's the position of B, right? Two. To the line. And three, a twiddle one. I get that. Y plus minus plus minus plus this in fact negative one. This negative. I'm using the position again. This C is multiplied by which is four. So it's again. Okay. So basically, um, one. In general, let's say now I'm going to do an uh, n by matrix. Thank you. 
what we can by three by three matrix. I'm going to say I have one plus one a times the determinant of a plus plus two a one two determinant of one two and so on negative one to the power plus n times a one n And this would be the co factor expansion for any rule of so how, how would that change in a one 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 right every that was one I want I want Someone. Here, this for dimension four by four, right? Um, and choose any row you want for the expansion. Right. Um, because it would get rid of most of the terms there. Example. A is That term, the expression a row of long So that the determinant of the identity by n Uh, 
So that is um Determinant of this matrix, which for CD, so it's just one. If you know that minus matrix is one, to get the identity of it. And uh, right to do co factor Uh, deleting uh, row one I'm thinking So what that one with my hypothesis, we know it people to work. So Okay. Now solving systems of linear equations and Reduce operations that were to transform a system. Three operations to to add a scalar of people. Elementary raw operations. And uh, so this is a function to the scalar. Function is a linear function. The remaining rows are held constant. Imagine that and I'm not going to write the entire instead of writing the first row, I'll write A one. If I list A one, I mean something like A2, and uh, row I, linearity. Mm -hmm. 
KV in the month. And then everything else will be and K is theorem is the following so A times no A one A two A N Determinant of V. And no I and V is in no I. The um, um, can be seen as induction. And uh, the entire thing. I just want to convince you that when it's false, I can actually go ahead and write everything and see how, how it works. Two matrices. Looks like this. Row two, I have a V. So two, one plus V one, U two plus K. It's going to be A one, A one one. What I need, uh, I got the vector u1, u2, the first matrix, I got the vector u, the matrix. Uh, two by two, I need exactly the determinant of square and I don't have to go, go back. Elementary rows with two identical rows.
All right, so that would be the easy way of the by induction. Still possible, but it's longer. But let's drag I would say let's just say the matrix looks like this. this is row one, this is row n. Again, those are n tuples. And uh, let's just say that the rows are the same. Track them in which which Uh, well, I thought you were going to apply this kind of idea. Because it's a On the left here, would have zero. I get it. Sorry, I might Rows. This. Identical rows I and J and just any other row other than R or J. So we with n terms, any one by n minus one. Two identical rows, not expected because I'm using a third one. So that Has been recorded, so I will say that So one, one rose, so rose gives you zero. So let me eliminate the thing in rows.
So when you're doing it, so basically, apples. Um, And the and J this would be and So not shorter and simpler if you do the previous result. Like for instance, here if you add the top, what would happen? What matrix you get? Identical rows, right? The rows I and J would become identical, and that means that it must be zero. But remember that that condition. However, in in this case, um. Is not, not and it will there. The which is like this. It's a difference, right? Only because we want to do it. Um, yes, the Determinant of zero. Determinant of everything. in row. And then doing it again. And what do you get? And that A, 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 right? A I is and the very one A G okay, but both the first and the last physical rows or their determinants will be And that's exactly so inter inter inter
to A B is the following matrix. So I to I'm going to use again that property that the difference is linear. We got everything fixed. I'm going to J. Correct? So, so AI. AI. A1 through A and then A A national matrix. Uh, right? Because we want one that is zero. We want to A equals So why would that be zero? Rules, right? It has I, it has K, it has A. What happens if the entire row is multiplied by the same scalar K? And when you after You get exactly in general, and I know job is in general. Okay, you can just do the row every term is which you can pack. So we go back. This is must be k times a. That matrix has two identical rows, so it's going to be k zero. Yes, and each thread add a model to another. So there is no okay. Uh, some more terminals.
can distribute over A inverse the identity. The determinant of the identity is the determinant of A inverse. Determinant of A inverse times determinant of A is what we prove to be right? Basically, if A is invertible, the determinant of A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A If you want to do cofactor expansion along the row, right? Because maybe your matrix doesn't, but it has a whole, right? Same thing for you is the notion. If there is uh, so such M inverse M. Um, in fact, what I mentioned before about the change of phase formula is going to go through a similarity to this kind of idea. But anyway, I will say here is the same And um, the PM and the determinant and this is right product. So we're dealing with, with um, round how we but then this do move them around. Um however still in the numbers the determinant of the circle right as numbers of the determinant of F is just one. Determinant of A is the determinant of A. So, matrix starting right and characteristic polynomials would not distinguish again between between them eigenvalues. Characteristic polynomial see any difference between this and similar matrix. So, uh, 
other direction. So Start to next. Time.